most popular video on my channel with 108,000 views, 6.2 thousand hours of watch time with 427 subscribers. I think I owe you a follow-up video to my top five neck knives. However, I'm going to make it the entire collection. Neck knives, fixed blades in that EDC category and some tactical in there as well. Okay, so this video is a follow-up, like I did mention, to my most popular video on my channel, my top five neck knives. However, I'm going to expand a little bit here and bring in things that would be considered everyday carry fixed blades, something that you would carry in your pocket. Of course, I've got some neck knives in here as well, and other knives that would probably be fit that category, and some tactical or tactical type knives. Uh, before I really get going here, there's a couple of honorable mentions from that video that I did Four years ago, I talked about the Buck 102 as a neck knife. It didn't make my top five, but I was using it as a neck knife when I went into the woods. I featured it in several videos. Um, it's such a sweet blade, and I just love this knife. And it seems to go well with the Buck 120, uh, the general. And I've just fastened it here with a piece of Velcro and a Ranger band. So. I'm not carrying it as a neck knife so much anymore, but every now and then I like to just put it on my belt, you know, for the weekend type thing. Buck 102, fantastic. Again, lots of videos on my channel on that knife. Another one that was in my top five in that original video was this, um, I think it's called the Fox River Mini or something like that. And this is Bark River Knives. And this is a sweet little blade, which again appears in several videos on my channel. This is an LMAX, got a super sharp spine, full convex, razor, razor sharp. And I use this many times to start a fire in some of those videos. And for that fine work, absolutely love this. Very nice knife. Um, I think it's the Fox River Mini. Not sure if they still make it or not. I've had this one for quite a while. And I've got it paired with the Fox River from Bark, Bark River, the full size. And again, this, this combo has been in many videos on my channel. All right, so the first one that I'm coming to on the top here, this is not rehearsed, by the way. I'm just kind of grabbing stuff. This is a Topps Silent Hero 4. And this one would come in the category, I think, of an everyday carry fixed blade. I have carried this many, many days. A lot of videos on my channel on this as well. I've taken it into the woods a few times. Really nice knife, 1095 high carbon. It's a little bit big, a little bit big. If it's, you know, it's a couple of things I don't like about it. I, I was kind of hoping that the profile would match the original uh, Silent Hero. In other words, instead of swooping back up a little bit in the blade, it just kind of stayed flat like the original. I think I would have liked it a little bit more. Uh, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And that is kind of something that I, I don't know, it's okay. But anyway, it's kind of turning me off a little bit. I still like this knife though. And a great sheath. And I have carried this in the scout position many, many times and on my backpack on the uh, shoulder strap. Moving right along here, what else we've got? Some cold steel action going on here. I think this is a Tokyo Spike, I think. Or it's this, the Spike. And I've carried this as a neck knife many times. The blade steel on this is, I can't read it. Uh, 4118. 4118. It says something else in there. Maybe you can see it. I can't see it on the video right now. Sweet blade. How cool would it be if it was in D2? I would like it even more. Really cool knife. Very, uh, oh, you know, kind of balanced out really nice. Secure X sheath. Great for neck knife carry. I have not tried it in the pocket, but I have carried it in a neck knife position. Never, hasn't been a problem. 
Um, we've got another Topps knives here. The Devil's Claw. A little bit on the heavy side. Uh, these are the original leather loops that it came with. And here you go, 1095 high carbon with the blue, I think it's the G10. Doesn't get a lot of love, don't carry it a lot. I find it to be just a little bit too heavy. So I haven't really found a really good place for this one yet. Way too heavy for a neck knife. Could everyday carry it, maybe if the straps came off and on a ulti clip, maybe. But so far, still working on that. Got some more knives in here. Here's a here's one that goes way back. Um, I think this is a Kershaw. Can't remember the name of it. Didn't make any cut at all as far as top five or anything like that. Just something I picked up. Very cheap. Blade steel is cheap too. Made in China. I don't know. It it's it's I could never really get a good edge on it, but. This thing doesn't, I don't think it was designed to have a good edge. It's very sleek, very compact. Maybe there is a good spot for it. Someone in the comments will say, yeah, maybe that would be a good spot for it as maybe a boot knife or something. I don't know, it's hard to say. Your suggestions have been very good. Got some more stuff in here. What else we got? Here's one that I used to carry quite a bit. I think this one is a QSP. Yeah, QSP. Very um, D2. Very D2. Super slicey. Really nice edge. The only drawback is it's got a kind of a funny situation here. It just doesn't feel quite right in this area. Something either needed to go that way or the other way. I don't know. Haven't figured it out. It's just not quite right. But it's still a nice knife. Sheath is good. Carried it many times. Uh, you'll notice that all the lanyards are taken off. I, I made a lot of custom ones over the years with the, with the paracord and all that stuff, stuff and adjustable and things like that. And I took them all off and I've just got a bunch of beads here. So whenever I'm going to carry one, I just put a bead on it for the day and I just find it a little bit easier. I could put these in a drawer and call it a day. Here's one from Amazon. I can't remember the name. It's got a video as well. It's in D2. Gosh darn, I can't remember the name of it right now. But go back to, oh gosh, CC something? Can't remember. Anyway, I've got a video on it. Just look for the thumbnail. You'll see this knife. Just absolutely sick point. And it holds an edge very nice. I've used it quite a bit. And it, I do believe that is D2. Very comfortable. I have carried this in both the neck position, which is very doable because it's not heavy at all. And I've, I've also put this on an ulti clip in the front pocket. So left pocket coming down, it's just easy to grab. Really cool. Right now, actually, I, I, I strap it on to my, my little waist pack. So when I'm cycling, I always have this in the front Along with many other ones here, I kind of moved them around. Let's move this guy over to the other end here. I think we're kind of sliding out of the way here. Yeah, that's good. All right, here's one that I featured many times on this uh, channel with the ulti clip on there. Of course, it's the Tops Cut 4.0. It's got the JJ Edge on it. I dyed the um, Micarta black. Kind of looks a little bit antique -y right now. I really like the, the feel, the look. A little bit on the heavy side, but in the front pocket, in on the ulti clip, perfect. And because it's got this round bit in here, it never really binds or anything in the when I'm bending over or anything like that. So it's been pretty comfortable. Everyday carry, not a problem. Into the woods, not a problem. One drawback is it's just a little bit heavier than some of these, these other offerings, but for, for what it can do, I would say it's worth it. It's definitely worth that extra little bit of weight. Again, it's on the Ulti right now. I've had it on the leather. 
Never would carry it as a neck knife. It's just way too heavy. Had it on my pack many times as well. So I've carried this at least three, four different ways. Tops 4.0. Cut 4.0, really nice knife. Here's one I recently got. This is the Requiem from Extrema Ratio. And I've shown this on a couple of videos. Very, very, uh, very pokey. Very cool. I like this knife. There's, there's a lot of things to like about it. Balanced extremely well. Uh, the blade steel. I know some of the comments down there are saying 58 uh, HRC. Somebody left a comment not too long ago saying it's, it's garbage. I don't know. I don't think it's garbage. I think it's a pretty good knife. It definitely has its limitations in some of its uses. Uh, if you're interested in something like this, I would probably stay away from the black only because... The stainless, ver stainless versions don't leave black marks on food. Um, now, to be fair, I did wash this with dish soap afterwards, and it has never left the black mark. So maybe it was just because it was new. And I did mention in a video that the, the flaw in this is that nice, wicked, sticky edge. Um, it does rub sometimes on the plastic, and that will just, it doesn't dull the knife. It'll just take away that sticky edge. But outside of that, it's a really nice knife. And I have been carrying this as a neck knife. So in this position here, and the bead goes kind of right in between here. And it's just sitting there ready for me anytime I need it. It's there. So it's been pretty good. Not too bad. I really don't have any issues with that except for that, that little bit of a dulling there. There's a little bit of rattle going on on this one, but I think it's probably expected to be there because of this style and design of the sheath. All right, cold steel again. We've got the, <clears throat> the mini tack. Really, really cool in hand. If you've never had one of these in your hand and you put this in for the first time, you're gonna go, wow, that is just so, so cool. Very, very cool. Um, yeah, what else can I say? I mean, look at that um, that clip point. Very nice. A little bit of jimping on the top. Very slicey, very pokey, very secure in the hand. This is not coming out of your hand once you're in that position. It's not coming out. Um, it's light enough that you can carry this as a neck knife. I've not tried it in any other uh, ways. Again, very good on the sheath, very snappy. I have only one drawback with this knife. I have seen people say that that when you pull it out, your finger is not on there right away, but really it's just a matter of getting used to it. That's these things are all these things here just take a little bit of time to get used to. So yeah, you just get make sure your fingers are in that position there when you grab it and your index finger is right where it's supposed to be. So I'm not really sure what the problem is. And what I did here was I put a little bit of a ball at the end. So what that does is it just gives me an opportunity to, to index it. So I'm right where I need to be right off the bat. You see where I'm going here? And it works extremely well. One drawback for this knife, it's not the what I just mentioned. It's the blade steel. If it was D2, I would be carrying this a heck of a lot more. But because it's 8CR13MOV, I find I just can't keep an edge. And I may have the same problem again, too, when the edge comes in contact with a little bit of the plastic. You know, it just takes away that sticky edge. And I know some of you think that that's crazy, but I do like my edges to always stay sticky. And I don't want the sheath to take that away. So it's just kind of a little thing that bothers me. So if this was D2 and it didn't rub against there, I think this would be the ultimate. Really like the mini tack. Now, speaking of the mini tack, I do have another one. Same thing, but this one is the Tonto, the fully serrated. Same thing, everything I said, D2, really, I would like it a little bit more. Good solid retention. Yeah, both of these knives are really cool, and they're not very expensive either. Next up, 
We've got the CRKT. I think it's the Obaki. And I've carried this as a neck knife many, many times. Yeah, this is a really cool knife. The Obaki. It, it kind of, it's coming, um, there's another knife in here that's, I'll, I'll come back to this one. I'll refer to it once I get to that knife when it comes to the shape. You probably already know which one it is. But anyway, very cool. I don't know if this one made my top five. I can't remember now. I probably should have watched that video. But overall, pretty cool knife. Could you put an ulti clip on this? Yep. I don't know, would it be probably okay for EDC, but I think it's got other intentions. Neck knife, not a problem. Very light, very nice knife. And not expensive. Uh, another cold steel. I think this one is the Tokyo Spike, I'm thinking. Uh, oh yeah, it's got a solid retention. Again, with that Securex, yeah, it's the Spike. Can't remember the names of some of these anymore. I haven't um, looked into that very much lately. Cold Steel. I think it's the Tokyo Spike, but I'm not sure. It's a little bit of a different handle in comparison to this guy. I always liked the look of it. And I, same thing, I could never get the blade edge to be nice and sharp. Very thin handle. Again, you, some of you are going to say that this might make a better boot knife or something. Or got a very good solid uh, retention there. I think it needs something on the end just to keep your finger, you know, from doing this, I think. And then you've got something solid. But, yeah, very cool. And, again, not overly expensive. Uh, this knife here, the CK, CRKT... This one inflicted a cut. I don't know if I can show you the... There's still a bit of a slice there. And we're going back, I think, about 10 years now. Um, yeah. This this knife here is not my favorite knife. Uh, I bought this one. I think this is like one of the first ones I ever bought. It had like a wrap and something sticking out the end here. I'm not sure the name of it anymore. Oh, there it is. It's called the Triumph Neck. Um, can't remember the blade steel. Kind of hard to sharpen. This one is wickedly sharp. I pulled it out. I can't remember what, exactly what I did, but yeah, you can imagine. Hurt like hell. Apparently, I was really close to hitting some tendon in there. I'm not the brightest bulb on the tree. Um, I had a problem with retention. I tried hitting it with some heat, and I think I did a little bit of melting in there. I don't know. This one kind of scares me. Yeah, anyway, I really don't carry it anymore. It's just lying around. Um, this one here is a recent, recent edition. This is the Becker, or the, sorry, the K-Bar. Um, what the heck was this thing called again? Can't remember now. It's the little one. It's not the big one. You know, the whole... Yeah, I like this one. I've carried it many different ways. Not a great blade steel. The sheath is, you know, some of the reviews were not great, but I put a, a tech lock on there. And I carry it in the, I guess that would be the nine o'clock position on my offhand, right? So 12, three, six, nine on the left hand, right? Left hand, right? So yeah, again, the interweb saying that there should have been a little bit more of an indent here so that when you pull it out, your your finger doesn't have to scooch forward. But I have not really noticed that because I just kind of get right in there and it seems to work fine. So I don't know. Everybody's got their own opinion. I like the tech lock. Again, I've carried this so many different ways. Uh, right now, this way, I've carried it horizontal. I've carried it downwards a little bit, you know. So, very cool knife, though, if you got the right tech lock. And these are pretty cheap, too. The tech locks you can get for really cheap on Amazon. Just keep a few of them around. Here's a uh, favorite of mine as well. This one is the Descobar, I think. 
or BK24, I can't remember now. You guys always have the right answer. Maybe it is the BK24, it's an SE. I have orange scales and black scales. I put a little bit of a groove in here so that it throws sparks, really nice. D2 blade steel on this one, holds an excellent edge. I've taken this into the woods. I've took this on top of um, the middle sister, started a little fire, it had something to eat up there. Uh, check out that video if you like. Really cool. It's a little bit heavy for a neck knife, but I have carried it with an ulti clip as well, in the front pocket. And I probably could put some leather loops on there too. Really nice, very nice, but a little bit on the heavy side for a neck knife. But uh, I don't know, I just like it. When you put it in your hand, it feels pretty good. And I'm probably gonna add maybe one and two more little grooves in there just to give me sort of some better traction up there. Might even put something up in here. I think it's the BK24. Please correct me in the comments. <clears throat> You've all seen this one before. CRKT. <clears throat> I can't remember the name of it now. The Minimalist. Thank you for putting the name on these knives. I think this is 8CR. I can't remember. Don't know why, but this one holds a really nice edge because... For whatever reason, the sheath does not damage it. Um, so yeah, highly recommend these. If if you have never handled one of these, I, you know, like I'm not telling you what to buy or anything, but <clears throat> really sweet. Carry this on your neck. You won't even know it's there when you need it to open up a package right away or something. Bam, it's so cool. But, you know, as you can see, I've got a bit of a, a bit of a habit here, so I like changing it up as well. <clears throat> I'll save the enough. Well, all right. I've 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 talked about this in many videos on my channel. It's still, you know, one of the best knives out there. K390, great blade steel. I mean, I just love this knife. I can't stand the sheath, but I love the knife. So I've carried it in leather sheaths, you know, and I've shown you how I do that and shown you why I like this knife. Again, the edge right now is very sticky, but if I use this for a long period of time, it's not going to be anymore. So, but I thought I'd show it to you. This is not the original configuration. These are tops loops that I put on, and it comes with a different configuration altogether. Again, check out those videos if you're interested. There's lots of videos on this knife on the internet. Great, great everyday carry. Absolutely love this knife. Um, you know I like the K390, if you've been following me for a while, the police Model 4. And I actually like the color and the texture of these scales, handles. Okay, so what else we got going on here? We've got... Um, oh, this one. So this one is, is related to... This one's related to this guy. I, both, I got them both on Amazon. This one is a little bit on the heavy side for a neck knife, but I am carrying it in the, I think that would be the one o'clock position. So it's kind of a reach forward and go forward that way. And there's a reason for that. And it's because when it comes out, you've got this crazy grabby hook here. And you've got the slice. So when you want to open that cardboard box in a hurry, you could do that. You see where I'm going here. So I guess that's the one o'clock position right for the right-handed. Now, I could also grab it left-handed, but I just don't want to hurt myself. But you can see where it lands. It's absolutely crazy. Crazy looking when I saw it. I was just like, wow, that's nuts. And this one keeps a super, super fine edge so i don't know i think this is actually um a kydex versus plastic but i don't know it, it's not damaging the edge so good on this company 
I've got a video on this with the name and everything like that if you want to find it. But a little too heavy for a neck knife, a little bit too big for a neck knife. And I had to take a, a uh, some sandpaper and just kind of take this down a little bit because it was a little bit janky. But once I did that, it's very, very, very comfortable in pretty much every grip. And yeah, it does a really good number on apples. On uh, I use all of my knives in the kitchen, by the way, uh, except for a couple. You know, obviously I don't use that one in the kitchen. Okay, so what else we got going on here? This is one of my most popular. When I first started my channel, Mr. Duck was, he was a very um, talkative, very interesting character. <laughs> so uh, we've got a, what is this, Outdoor Edge, I think it's called? Yeah, Outdoor Edge. So for a neck knife, this is a great one. Again, you don't have to use this clip to remove the knife. One good tug, and I'm not going to do it because, well, I'm going to hurt myself again. A couple of, just the ball bead on here, neck knife, very, very comfortable. This one is in the same category as the Minimalist. Very light, very small, very cutty, and very useful. Outdoor Edge Leduck. And it gives us, oh, all the rest are tops. Look at this, we'll bring them all out. I don't think we missed anything. So we'll go with the Tom Brown. I think this is the number four. This one made the cut in that original video. You can see that I've used it quite a bit. I've given it a spine as well. So I've started many fires with the firebox, made many notches for tent stakes, super knife. This the f probably makes the best feathers of everything I own. 1095 high carbon. I think that's micarta. Really nice sheath. I've carried this in both the neck knife and on the ulti clip. Yeah, you can't beat this one. This is a really nice knife. Yeah. Another tops 1095 is the Street Scalpel 2. I've been carrying this one a lot lately in the neck knife. And I've also carried it in a dangling thing from my belt loop. So I've got these clips that I could kind of, you know, the vertical portion of your pants there. You can kind of just hang it and just pull down. And and then you're you're presented this beautiful edge and this beautiful blade and very thick, but not really heavy. So, very cool. Lots of videos on this knife on this channel. Just like all of these knives here as well. I think this is the MSK 2.5. Again, I have carried this a ton into the woods. You'll see this around my neck on many of those Into the Woods videos. I'm carrying it, same thing with the ball, ball chain. Uh, I've had paracord, so many different paracord um, carries on this. I put a little uh, thing on here for the same reason as uh, that cold steel. As soon as your finger goes in there and you just give it a push, you're already in a good position. Uh, they're, they're calling it a full Scandi, but it's false advertising. There is a micro bevel on this when you first get it. You'll notice that mine's high polish because I took away that micro bevel and just made it a full Scandi. Super knife. Um, the only thing that I need to do is just clean up this spine a little bit or give myself a little notch just so I can scrape the ferro rod. It <clears throat> It's actually scraping in this section here right now. Really like this. MSK, if you own the MSK 2.5, I think you'll know what I mean. Great sheath, great retention, not overly heavy, solid, yeah. This is a winner. This one is going to be, I'm going to do my top five again here in a second. Uh, what else we got here? Oh, am I missing the obvious? All right, some of you have left comments saying that this one isn't available anymore. I don't know if that's true or not. 
Maybe it's just um, taking a break and it's going to be coming back. It's hard to say. Um, this one, the El Pioneero, is freaking awesome. This one is on my belt full time. Um, again, this one is in the 11 o'clock position going downward. So, yeah, I just, when I have a shirt that's hanging over my, my belt, you know, the only thing I see is that. So my hand just kind of comes in naturally and it's there. Perfect. I've got a wicked, <clears throat> a wicked edge on it right now and it never dulls because the sheath is not taking away that edge. 10.95, and this one I'll, I'll tie back to that Obaki. Remember, I was talking about the blade, and you know, possible, possible comparison. Where is it? Kind of reminded me a little bit. You could probably see that I'm thinking, but yeah, I don't know, man. Pretty cool. This one I like. When you put it in your hand. It feels pretty good, especially in this position. And I think the original, it was supposed to be this way in uh, Pical, I believe, with the blade coming back. It actually feels better in that position with your index finger in that notch. But this works as well. Um, <clears throat> I think I've been pretty obvious that this one is right now my number one. Guaranteed number one. I have used this in the kitchen, you know, because, you know, they do mention the paring knife. I did uh, eat a steak with it. However, I don't recommend cutting on a um, ceramic plate because you will take away that edge. If you want to cook steak and eat steak, maybe try on a wooden type of plate where you're not going to damage that edge. Ceramic will just, it'll dull it right in here. So I've resharpened it. Uh, food prep in the kitchen. Yeah. Um, just working around uh, tape on the vehicle, stuff like that. Boom, pull it down and stare, make my cut, put it back, done. Awesome. I'm really starting to grow more. Uh, maybe it's because I'm getting older. I, I like the fixed blade because, I don't know, they just, there's no, no maintenance. However, I still like my folding knives as well. So if I had to say which ones are my favorite, I'm going to say that this one is definitely my number one currently. Will another one come along tomorrow to, to take, it, take it away? Maybe. All the rest, I mean, the street scalpel, absolutely. Uh, by all means, you know. Again, you can see that the tops are really ahead of the game here. Um, let's put this one away. However, you could talk about categories, right? So neck knife. This one here would be a neck knife, but maybe in a bushcrafting scenario. You've got some in here that are strictly tacked to cool. You're not going to be pairing any knives with this. And then you've got your everyday carry. You know, your everyday carry would be something like this. All of these are everyday carry, right? In theory. So, yeah, many different little categories. And then you've got this other category here. You've got the... You know, these really small feather light ones that just disappear. I mean, if you put this behind a t-shirt, they're very thin. This one here, you wouldn't even, it wouldn't print at all. <clears throat> and I think that's pretty much it. If there's anything else in here I missed, you know, I probably made some mistakes in here. I, mean, <laughs> I just can't remember anymore. But anyway, I got a bunch in here. And I don't think I'm missing any right now. So thank you for the 400 plus subscribers who subscribe to this channel based on that first video. I hope this one is sort of in line with that, uh, that video. Uh, you can see the collection is, it's changed quite a bit, a little bit, it's grown a little. I have sold a few here and there over the years. But uh, again, thank you very much. Um, I might do my second and third most popular coming up very soon uh, my second most popular video is all my huge monster folders but i think i've already got a couple of videos on my channel on that and of course the number one when it comes to my multi-tool videos is my where is it 
right here, is the power pint. Holy crap, this thing gets a ton of views. You people must like your power pints out there. This one is on my table full time. I've been using this for everything. I could probably do another follow up on this one. It never leaves the table. So once again, this is a bit of a long video, but thank you very much. Please check out my playlist because I just don't do videos like this. I hope you know that by now. Bye for now. <laughs>